Hi, good afternoon, and um, thank you so much for tuning back into Mama Sanity. Today is Thursday. Um, it's a beautiful day outside. Um, yesterday we had some like crazy, crazy um, thunderstorms, um, but you know, April showers bring May flowers. So um, we, we needed the rain. Um, hopefully it'll stay beautiful and sunny. Um, I'm bringing y'all's Friday video to you today on Thursday because it, if you live in San Antonio, Texas, um, it's fiesta time and so this is kind of like our Friday because tomorrow the kids have off of school for fiesta so um, you know how that goes. So <clears throat> today I want to talk to y'all about um, going through storms and where are your roots. So growing your roots deep down to where nothing can destroy you. Um, I want to start off by saying um, Thank you, Catherine. Um, over the Easter break, she had um, texted me. She's watching a series um, by Pastor Craig. I can't pronounce his name, um, but it was called, the series that she was watching was My Big Fat Mouth. And she had texted me and she said, hey, you should really watch these videos. Um, I did, thank you so much. They are way awesome. And um, he's, they call him Pastor Craig. And um, if you look at him on YouTube and you type in my big fat mouth, he'll come up and then um, all his sermons, a lot of his sermons, and he does like three or four in a certain series. And so as usual last night, you know, I can't sleep. And so I stayed up all night long and for about four hours, I was watching um, on YouTube his, his videos. And it was a lot of um, truth and, you know, inspiration. And thank you so much, Catherine. So now I'm adding him to my daily um, watch list as well with um, Joyce Myers and my devotionals. So I appreciate that. Um, but what he was talking about um, was also kind of tying in to a little bit about what I'm going to talk to you today. So um, I'm gonna get started. Um, the story that I have for you is off of Pinterest and it's by John Ray Ryder Jr. And it's called The Oak Tree. A mighty wind blew night and day, it stole the oak tree's leaves away, then snapped its bows and pulled its bark, until the oak tree was tired and stark. But still the oak tree held its ground, while other trees fell all around. The weary wind gave up and spoke, How can you still be standing, oak? The oak tree said, I know that you can break each branch of mine in two, carry every leaf away, shake my limbs, and make me sway. But I have roots stretched in the earth, growing stronger since my birth. You'll never touch them for you see, they are the deepest part of me. Until today I wasn't sure of just how much I could endure. But now i found, with thanks to you, I'm stronger than I ever knew. I wanted to share that with y'all today because it's very true, it rings very true, okay? So we all have roots, okay? and. You know, it all stems back, you know, maybe from birth, childhood, adulthood, what have you. So growing up, my childhood wasn't the best in the West. A lot of people's childhoods probably aren't, you know, perfect and, you know, Brady Bunch perfect and everything. Um, <clears throat> growing up, um, my mom would take us to church and, you know, as um, little kids, you know, you get drugged to church and you kind of don't really pay attention. Um, and so that's kind of how it started out for me. However, the older I got, I did start paying more attention and I came to give, give my life to Jesus at 12 and start my relationship. So I would probably say when in my childhood um, that the seed got planted in the ground when I started going to church. And then, you know, I watered it a little bit and it really got planted when I gave my life to Jesus. And so my roots, you know, started going down a little further. <clears throat> Junior high and high school, um, I would go to church. I was, um, you know, growing up, my brother um, would read his Bible every morning before school. <coughs> Sorry. So um, I kind of looked up to my brother and so I followed along with him and so I thought okay well you know I, that's a good idea I'll read my Bible every day um, I think I've read the Bible I'm still I'm reading the Bible once again I think this is my third time to read the Bible fully through and each time I get more and more out of it because I pay more attention to the details right so you know um, growing up I, I read my Bible and then um, junior high and high school, I would go to church Wednesday nights. Um, I even helped teach um, Bible study on Wednesday nights. 
And, you know, a lot of things happened, you know, through your teenage years and, you know, you go through a rough time, but I'm, I'm still here. I made it through. Um, I went to um, several church camps in high school and it was kind of ironic because um, one of the church camps was held at the University of Maryland Baylor and I was on the dance team so I was not able to go to uh, that camp that week however um, that Friday when my dance camp was over um, the church came and picked up a big group of us we went to Belton to Maryland Baylor picked up that group and then traveled to Dallas for um, a convention a different camp and a convention and a concert okay that was um, the first time I had been to Mary Harden Baylor and lo and behold guess where I went to college Mary Harden Baylor go Crusaders um, anyway so um Christian University okay so of course I those four years I'm like totally on fire for God right you know you've got to take chapel and you've got to take Bible classes and they have all kinds of you know camps and conventions and seminars and all kinds of stuff going on on campus like all the time um, that are getting you totally on fire for God and Jesus right so those four years like I'm 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 doing it I'm on I'm on track and I'm on fire and I'm just like yay awesome and then I graduate and I got married and I still went to church but not as much as I should have and life happens things come at you and you know like that roller coaster that you go up and down um, and you kind of put God on the back burner burner and you backslide and so I still had you know my, my, my faith in, in God but like I said you know things happen I got pregnant <clears throat> When my first child at 26 weeks, I went into labor. I thought I was having a miscarriage. Hello, no labor. Labor for two days. They said he's coming. We got to do an emergency C-section. Okay, um, two pounds, one ounce. He's hooked up to all these machines. He's in the NICU for three months. And at this point, you know, all this is happening, and everybody, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm anxious, worry wart. Like I've got to have everything planned out. This is totally not going according to plan right and I think that's when God said okay your life is not going to be anything like you planned Brandy um so I was scared of course you know my little two pound baby they didn't know if he was going to make it he did he's 13 now fixing to be 14 um and I just it was really weird because right after um the c-section and everything um you know i couldn't hold him or anything he's in saran wrap and he's in the nicu and they just sent me a little photograph and i got sick for two weeks and so it was really hard for me to go see him at first and but it was weird i yes i was scared and i was kind of nervous and i was like you know how am i going to do this what am i going to do but at the same time it was like i had this peace in me that he's going to make it and it's going to be okay so I think that was due to um, my roots being planted, okay? So all this, you know, my, my branches are being shed off and my leaves are falling off and I'm, you know, you know, had to quit my job and things are just, I'm sick for two weeks and I'm thrown up and they run in every test in the book and they can't figure out what's wrong with me and, you know, got to be there for him and, but I'm still here and I'm still firm and I knew, I knew that I knew God was telling me he's going to be okay, okay? So that happens, and um, three more kids later, so four kids total, um, well, five pregnancies and a miscarriage, um, So, but four kids later, and I, you know, over the years, you know, being a mom and being a wife and, and t taking care of the kids in the house and, and kind of, you know, doing your daily activities, once again, God got put on the back burner. Not proud of it. It happened. You know, we come through, right? <clears throat> So a good friend of mine um, a few years back said, hey, why don't you and your family come to church with us one Sunday and just see if you like it? So we did, and guess what? We loved it, and we're still going, and so thank you so much for that. Um, so that kind of got me gung-ho and, and back on fire for God. Um, also, during that time, um, my mom introduced me to Joyce Myers. So she had came in town, and... Um, to visit and I took my vehicle in for an oil change it turned into like several days of they messed up and I had to get a rent a car and just I was like ah and so um we were sitting here one day and she was like hey have you ever watched Joyce Myers and I'm like no and so she introduced me to that um so like I'm saying everything happens for a reason okay you're going through all this chaotic stuff and the wind's blowing and everything's going on around you but you're standing firm and 
You'll see why later on. <clears throat> Several years later, I still watch her every day. Thank you, Mom. Awesome. Um, I love her. Um, at that time, I really, go, you know, watching Joyce and going to church, I really got into, I used to do devotionals, of course, and then I, you know, stopped doing them for a while, and then I got really back into doing my devotionals again. Um, always listen to, you know, rock, country, rap, you know, listen to all kinds of music. Um, I did love um, a lot of Christian music back in the day, right? Um <clears throat> And I stopped listening to it for a while. So um, a friend of mine said, hey, she listened to Caleb. And so I turned Caleb on. And they at that day that I turned it on, they were actually doing the 30-day challenge. Okay? Coincidence? No. So um, the 30-day challenge was to listen to nothing but Caleb for 30 days. And just see how much more alive and freer and joyful you feel right and so at first I'm thinking I don't know that I can just listen to Caleb like every day okay so I started out and I listened to Caleb for a little bit and then I go back you know to a rock song or a country song or you know whatever my other stations so it took a couple weeks and then <clears throat> after hearing these songs I was just like you know getting more on fire for God and I was like okay I like this and now I listen to Caleb all the time I don't just listen to Caleb. I still like my country and my and my rock and you know things like that. But I listen to country. I'm, I mean, I listen to Caleb about ninety percent of the time. Okay. Um, sometimes the mood strikes me and I'm like, you know, I want old country or, or you know, I want to jam out and rock with the kids or something. But <clears throat> each time something like this happened, whether it be <clears throat> going to a Christian school or the faith that God gave to the peace that God gave to me when I had my first son early or the friend asking me to go to church or my mom showing me Joyce Myers or me reading my starting to read my devotionals or my other friend saying hey you should start listening to Caleb and doing the 30-day challenge my roots okay so they're starting to get deeper and deeper and deeper and then they're starting to stretch out right and so I'm like planting my roots okay so a lot of things have happened and you know at, at, in the moment it seems like my world is just crashing down and oh my gosh but guess what I'm still here okay you're still here if you're watching this you may be going through a hard rough time but you're still here and you're gonna make it through so that's the whole point in this is <clears throat> even if you're thinking okay Brandy you started when you were young. I'm I'm older now. You know, I didn't grow up in the church, or I don't have friends that want to take me to church, or I don't have, you know, that biblical background, or, or whatever. Or I've I did, but I backslid too much. It is never ever too late to start. It is never too late to change, and it is never too late to give your life and love to Jesus. Okay, so <clears throat> as Joyce always says, unconditional love. Okay, God is love okay he doesn't give us love because we deserve it because we don't we mess up all the time we don't deserve it but he gives it to us anyway why because that's who he is he is love and he doesn't love us or give us blessings or miracles because we go to church or because we listen to Caleb or because we help this person out or because we donate our time and money or because we volunteer no he does it because that's who he is he is love and when we do read our Bible and we do go to church and we do volunteer our time and we do help others out is because, why? Not to get something from God, but it's because you love God so much that you want to do things for him, okay? So Joyce is, um, you know, and I never knew this, you know, growing up and going to, you know, Christian school and everything. I never knew that God is never, ever going to love you more now than he did when you were born he's always going to love you the same because it's unconditional love no matter what you've gone through no matter what you've done you can always truly come to him and say i'm sorry can you help me and he will okay so let me just get that out of the way um <clears throat> never never too late um to start planting your roots and if you have planted your roots and you've backslidden like i have several times just get back up okay um, the quotes that I have for you today, <clears throat> um, it says, and once the storm is over, you won't remember how you made it through. 
how you've managed to survive, you won't even be sure whether the storm is really over. But one thing is certain, when you come out of the storm, you will not be the same person who walked in. That's what the storm is all about. So like I've said before, I would not go back in my past and change anything. Did, do I like that I had to suffer? Do I like the things that I went through? No, not at all. However, they made me who I am today. And I think, like Joy says, um, she talks about her childhood and how bad it was. I mean, her childhood was just horrific. Um, but it's made her who she is today. And she probably wouldn't be standing up preaching and sharing the word of God if she hadn't gone through that. Okay, so the trials that we go through make us stronger and teach us about who we are meant to be. Okay, so last night in watching those videos, like I talked about, about Pastor Craig, um, I really got into the, um, the, the series where he says, when God doesn't make sense. I've said before, there's several things that happen in this world that don't make any kind of sense to me. Child abuse, child molestation, rape, okay, kidnapping, murders, okay, you know, these crazy hurricanes and tornadoes that just take thousands and thousands of lives. I don't, I don't get it. Like, I, you know, our God is such a wonderful God, and I just don't understand how there is all this evil in this world. However, we don't have to understand anything to know the purpose. There is a purpose for everything that happens. Okay, like I said, we may never know the purpose, but the purpose for whom that is meant for, they will know the purpose. Okay, for instance, um, a few years ago, we had watched this movie about this girl, um, this little girl, um, I don't know, she's like eight or nine, and she got really, really sick, and her stomach just like blew up. It looked like she was pregnant or something, like, and it was this rare disease, and it was killing her. And her parents, you know, they were all Christian family. They went to church, and they were just like really struggling, like, God, why would you do this to us? Like, we serve you. We go to church. We help people out. Like, we are strong, strong believers. Why would this happen? Well, come to find out she needed to lead another child to Christ. Okay, so she's in and out of hospitals, right? And she meets this one little girl and she's wearing, before she goes to her treatment, she's wearing this cross around her neck. And the little girl says, hey, you know, what is that? And so she says, you know, she tells her about Jesus and the dad gets upset because the dad's like, oh, well, we don't believe in that. So tell your daughter to quit talking to my daughter about God and Jesus and, you know, whatever. But she get, I think she lets her wear the necklace. Come to find out several months later, that little girl who didn't know about God and Jesus um, ended up dying. But before she died, the father said she started to believe and she started to talk to him. And now he has a peace that she's up in heaven because this one sick girl shared God and Jesus with this other sick girl. Now, how she had not gone through all that pain and all those years of sickness that little girl would never have been led to Christ. Jesus, he took the ultimate sacrifice for us. Okay, he did it for us. Because before him, you messed up like we all do, and you couldn't repent of your sins and be forgiven, right? So he died, and even if on the cross, he's saying, God, why have you forsaken me? Okay, he didn't want to go through all that pain and torture, but he did. Why did he do it? for us, to help us to become better people and to help us believe in him and, and repent of our sins and come to be with him one day in heaven. <coughs> Excuse me. So things happen for a purpose, okay? And everything that we go through, we come out that much stronger. Like I've said before, that which does not kill us makes us stronger from still Martinoia's and it is very, very true. Last quote, <clears throat> hard times are often blessings in disguise. Let go and let life strengthen you. No matter how much it hurts, hold your head up high and keep going. This is an important lesson to remember when you're having a bad day, a bad month, or a bad year. Truth be told, sometimes the hardest lessons to learn are the ones your spirit needs the most. Your past was never a mistake. If you learn from it, take it all the crazy experiences and lessons place them in the box labeled thank you all the stuff that I've gone through all the stuff that you've gone through 
you look back and there are things that, yes, you wish you hadn't gone through, but if you truly, truly dig deep down, there might be a thank you or I am glad that I went through that because, like I said, sometimes we may never know and that's just the way it is. Um, <clears throat> things happen in life and they bring you you know okay so like pastor craig says last night if god were to give you every single thing that you wanted as soon as you asked for it what would be the point in us trusting him and having faith in him and following him right because then we would know all we'd have to do is say hey god i want this hey god help me through this and he would do it immediately Okay, there is a waiting period, and trust me, I am extremely impatient, and I want things now. And so waiting is not easy for me at all, but it's something that I've learned that when you're waiting in that period, God is trying to teach you and mold you and to prepare you for your miracle, okay? I'm go we're going through... Um, several years of you know where you know the kids have friends that you know they have a lot more money than we do okay and you know we're, we're having to rely a lot on faith and God is good and he has provided every single day for us and every single month and there's not been a time that we, we have been without and so that's our miracle we are truly blessed and if he would just say, okay, Brady, I'm going to have you win the lottery, you know, a long time ago, whatever, you know, um, then it wouldn't have grown our family stronger in faith to him, to rely on him and to hold on to him. And I think that with trials comes the process of, okay, it's, it's preparing us and molding us for who we are meant to be. Okay, and what we feel and what we think that we need at that moment, just because God is not answering us at that moment and may make us wait, doesn't mean he's saying no. It just means that he's saying, I have something much better for you. And in order for you to be able to endure and be joyful and happy with this, you need to grow and mature. Okay, so I know that was a little deep and long-winded. I apologize. Um, I hope that y'all have a wonderful weekend, and until next time, stay safe.